Bedroom of an aristocrat. A girl in a dress was lying on pillows. On top of her was a brunette. The guy brought his face closer, and he assured that Linnea could not even imagine how long he had been waiting for this moment. The bed springs creaked under the double weight of the couple, and in the girl's eyes there was prayer and fear. The young man hastily took off his shirt, revealing his sculpted muscular torso. With a sharp movement, the partner unbuttoned the brown-haired woman's dress, exposing her shoulders. Linnea froze in confusion, but soon she extended her hand to his chest. The brunette enthusiastically began to kiss her fingers. The guy put her palm to his cheek. He looked at Linnea with his red eyes. The partner grabbed the girl tightly by the ankle, pressing her tightly to his thigh, bending his knee at the same time. His hand slid higher up her thigh and under her dress. The fabric of the girl's clothes rustled. There was a click. A thick, wide leather strap was fastened to a small steel padlock on Linnea's leg. The girl's pupils narrowed. The brown-haired woman stood up abruptly. She was completely confused and stammered asking to wait. Afterwards, the young lady clarified whether this action was carried out on the orders of her father. Linnea looked away and thought. After all, she agreed to this marriage only because she passionately wanted to survive. Then our heroine stood sad with her green eyes downcast. She was wearing a modest white dress, but this union brought the girl only unbearable pain. A brunette in a monocle bent over Linnea, caressing her cheek. Sliding higher under the dress along her thigh, the man fastened the strap with a padlock, clicking it loudly. The man hugged Linnea and held her by the wrist, looking into her eyes. In this family, the girl was tightly bound by the shackles of the family. The man's hand grabbed a thick cord. Linnea turned away in fear, but the broad-shouldered brown-haired man grabbed the edge and held it tightly not allowing him to offend the girl. Alexis became her only salvation. Linnea's neck had a fresh wound, and the guy's lips were also covered in blood. They looked into each other's eyes. Even though they were completely different creatures, she couldn't help but fall in love with him. The young man bit into the brown-haired woman's neck. She held him by the shoulders. Alexis's hair turned white and his body trembled. The guy pulled away and asked how she could love them. Linnea involuntarily shuddered, opening her eyes wide. The girl asked again. The guy who bandaged her leg believed that they were not the kind that deserved love. The blonde, looking directly into his eyes, assured Linnea that they were too different from those. There were traces of wounds on the girl's neck. Her interlocutor could not call this vile desire to possess love. The blonde guy sat down next to him. He gently held Linnea's hand, and he assured her that it was not too late to change her mind. The guy looked out the window and assured that she had to run away from here. A brunette with a bare torso loomed over the girl. His breathing was rapid. Linnea squeezed his shoulder with her hand. She asked to stop. After all, if they were caught like this, problems could arise, and she reminded that they were one family. The brown-haired woman believed that they should not have done this. The guy looked at her with red eyes, and he began to stroke his partner's hair. Holding her by the neck, the brunette tilted his face towards the girl. He assured Linnea that he had never, not for one moment, considered her his family. Under the pressure of his strong hand, the lock shackle cracked. The mechanism clanged with a metallic sound. The brunette leaned over the girl. She was confused. The partner began to kiss her passionately, hugging her tightly to himself. Our heroine walked boldly and cheerfully along the stone path. The girl was dressed in a fluffy dress with frills, and on her feet were simple leather shoes. The brown-haired woman stood on the embankment, admiring the moored ship. Her hair was blown by the sea breeze, and in her hands she clutched the handle of her suitcase. The day has finally arrived. The girl was very accustomed to her city. She watched with bated breath as the bags were loaded onto the sea vessel closest to the pier, but she still had doubts that one day there would be a reason to return here. Fifteen years ago, a man brought a girl into his family. He asked his daughter to say hello to Linnea, and he claimed that from now on she would live with them. The little girl timidly greeted, but the capricious blonde did not want to put up with her father's decision. She demanded that she go home. The father, in a conciliatory tone, assured the girl that Linnea no longer had a home where she could return. When our heroine was orphaned, her uncle took her in, and from then on, every day, only slave labor for his trading guild awaited her. But now the girl has finally left all this behind. The guys from the Port Stevedores recognized Linnea. The brown-haired man was surprised at the veracity of the rumors. Another man considered those at the head of the guild to be blinded by money. Three people called out to the brown-haired woman in unison. She looked over her shoulder in surprise. The longshoreman moved closer to Linnea. 
and they asked if it was true that she was going north. The girl thought sadly that she had so desperately dreamed of boarding one of the ships moored in this harbor and leaving this place forever. Therefore, Linnea, smiling, confirmed the veracity of those rumors and joyfully said goodbye to them. She announced that she was leaving to get married. Today was the day when her dream was destined to come true. Our heroine was riding in the carriage cabin. Looking out the window, she could not believe that she had reached the north. She suddenly felt sad for some reason. Linnea really hoped that this decision was correct. But the girl was also sure that if she had stayed in the south, her life would never have changed. The carriage rumbled and creaked, and the passenger watched endless landscapes out the window one after another. At sunset, the carriage arrived at the gate. The maid pressed the door handle. The lock clicked into place. The girl offered her hand to the mistress, helping her to get off the high steps of the cabin. A confident brunette stood a little to the side. She greeted Linnea, and she introduced herself as the maid of the Matai estate, Sophia. The newcomer greeted with a slight hesitation. The greeter assured that it would be nice to chat here, but they still had a lot to saddle up, and she asked permission to take her inside. The brunette dryly ordered the maid Margaret not to stand idle, but to help the lady with her luggage. The girl took the guest's suitcase. Linnea protested. But she said that from now on her role would be to manage the servants. Sophia reminded that after all, the lady was soon to become a countess. Our heroine was taken aback by these words. Linnea smiled and nodded understandingly. The brunette said that on the ground floor there is a dining room and bathrooms. And on the second, according to her, there was an office and a master's bedroom, shared by her and her future husband. Linnea was surprised that she would share a bedroom with someone. Smiling and a little embarrassed, the girl asked to tell her about the Lord. The maid Sophia assured that he was strict and caring, and she insisted that she wouldn't worry too much. The brunette, clicking her heels, approached the guest. She assured that Linnea needed to remember something, that in no case should you go up to the third floor without permission. Sophia smiled and said that there was a chapel and a master's office there, assuring that all the servants avoided these places if possible. The girl assured that she understood and would try to remember it. The maid said that the guest should now be prepared. Before her arrival, Linnea had already received the message. That due to the fact that this will be a marriage of convenience, all formalities will be over in the shortest possible time. Linnea was sitting in the bathroom, and a servant stood nearby, holding the dress prepared for the ceremony on a hanger. The bride-to-be asked if she could prepare herself. Looking at the very modest wedding dress, the girl was disappointed. She never expected it to be like this. The maid asked if the lady could really handle washing, dressing and creating her own image on her own. She involuntarily shuddered. Sophia felt that this was not the wisest decision on her wedding day, and she asked whether it would be better to resort to their help. Linnea remembered the maid's words that her role was to manage the servants. After all, the lady was soon to become a countess. The girl involuntarily twitched and bowed her head, allowing the servants to wash her. After getting dressed, Sophia began applying her mistress makeup. She asked the girl to look up and not close her eyes. The servant, holding the bride by the chin, asked her to trust her, and Linnea thought that she felt discomfort and even pain. The brunette thought it was good that the ceremony would take place at night. She never expected the aristocrat to be so awkward with powder, and the bride could not get rid of the feeling that something was wrong. Linnea asked if it was a tradition in the north to hold a wedding ceremony after sunset. The maid replied that this was not uncommon here due to the extremely short days. Sophia argued that there was no reason for them to invite many guests and throw a lavish celebration in the middle of the day. The brown-haired woman clutched the hem of her dress. The maid reported that marriage to a commoner was not a cause for pride. The girl stood up abruptly, knocking over the chair beneath her. He fell to the floor with a crash, but not a single muscle moved on Sophia's face. The girl told herself that she shouldn't have cried, and she told the maid, looking away, that she had forgotten something. When leaving, she assured that she would return in a second. Linnea thought that it was impossible to say that the maid was wrong, but she had to have fun mocking the bride. Having opened the doors, the brown-haired woman collided with a man in the doorway. She screamed involuntarily, but immediately stepping back sharply, Linnea lost her balance. The brunette deftly caught her by the waist. They found themselves face to face. The guy looked at the brown-haired man with slanted red eyes. Linnea's cheeks quickly turned red from such closeness. She completely forgot about all her worries. The silence between the couple stretched out slightly. The lady wondered who this handsome man could be. 
finally moving away from the excitement that had gripped her, the girl awkwardly began to mutter something. Leaning away, she hurried to remove her hands, which were lying on the young man's chest. Afterwards, Linnea began to hastily apologize. When the brown-haired woman stepped back, she suddenly felt a slight pain. At first, she didn't understand what had happened. It turned out that the girl got her hair caught on one of the buttons on the brunette's shirt. She started muttering something incoherently that she was very sorry. Completely embarrassed, the young lady extended her hand to his chest and hastily untangled his hair. There was a trace of lipstick on the snow-white shirt. Interrupting all these attempts to free the blonde hair, the young man touched Linnea's hand. From this almost weightless touch, our heroine's face blushed even more. And even despite the fact that at that moment his hands were as cold as ice, despite all this, his touch was still soft and pure like snow. In absolute silence, the young master carefully lifted the blonde's head by the chin. From this simple action, the girl's heart skipped a beat. Because of the tenderness shown, suspicions began to creep in among the young lady. She suggested that perhaps this taciturn fellow was her husband. Finally, the gentleman decided to break the silent pause. He asked to forgive him. Then he explained that his father would not tolerate smudged lipstick. After this phrase, Linnea's face frowned a little in misunderstanding. She wondered what the guy meant by this. Finally, my lady saw a beautiful rag that was thrown over the young man's elbow. She guessed that it was a wedding dress. At this moment, Sophia broke the awkward silence. Turning to the brunette, the maid expressed gratitude for the fact that Mr. Alexis helped the girl. Therefore, now his stepmother will still come on time and without delay to the ceremony. Thanks to him. The brown-haired woman almost screamed at that moment. Now all the words were clear. The lady guessed who the guy was. At that time, as the brunette stood next to the young man, Linnea came to the realization that he was not her husband. He was only the son of his future husband. Or rather, he was soon to become her stepson. Leaning towards the very embarrassed lady, Alexis again asked her forgiveness. After that, he decided to leave and not interfere anymore. Without turning around, the brunette said that they would see each other in the ceremony hall when the bride was completely ready. Turning around, the young man, without waiting for an answer, headed towards the front door in order to leave the girls. Heavy footsteps were heard. Milady just looked languidly after the guy for a while, trying to understand what happened. A sharp slam of the door was heard. The gentleman left. Sophia asked the girl if he was really good. After this, the brunette said that indeed many people were surprised that it was the heir of the Matei house. After all, this gorgeous gentleman who put Linnea in an awkward position was very young and incredibly handsome. The brunette undressed. His body was muscular and sculpted. In fact, there were many women before the countess. At that moment, the gentleman's gaze stopped at the lipstick imprint on the shirt. Quite a few ladies allowed themselves to look in the wrong direction after the wedding, getting carried away by the boys. Having said this, the maid asked what Miss herself thought about it. Did she think Mr. Alexis was also attractive? But she didn't have time to finish speaking. The brown-haired woman interrupted Sophia, stopping her flow of thoughts, and she assured that this was not an appropriate topic of conversation for her before the wedding. Slightly surprised by such a sudden change of topic, the maid did not argue. The lady wanted them to focus on preparing her well before the ceremony. Smiling stereotypely at Mrs. Sophia, she agreed with her. She said that she was right. It was already evening. Linnea stood in her wedding dress, thinking about something of her own. The great hall was practically empty. The brown-haired woman held a small bouquet of delicate white flowers in her hands. Miss was happy that she was finally getting married. Breaking her out of her thoughts, someone's approaching steps were heard behind the young lady. Suspecting that it was her future husband who had finally arrived, my lady quickly turned towards the sound. Quickly examining the arriving brunette from head to toe, the lady realized that it was Count Edward Matei. Comparing the man with his son, she wondered if everyone in the family had dark hair and red eyes. The atmosphere around him was completely different from Alexis's. The Count was dressed in a neat suit. He greeted his future wife, Miss Linnea. The thought flashed through our heroine's head that this man would become her husband. According to the rules of etiquette, raising the hem of her dress, my lady bowed in a curtsy, and then he timidly greeted his master in response. The brunette assured that he allegedly heard that the girl had already met his son the day before. Linnea stammered and confirmed this. After looking at the floor, the brown-haired woman began to make excuses that it was only for a short moment. Interrupting the girl's incoherent speech, the count grabbed her chin with his hand and raised the face of his future wife up. The groom was very tall much taller than Linnea. 
he narrowed his eyes and thought about something. Afterwards, the brunette said that it really was quite amazing. The lady did not understand what was the matter. The words were heard that he now understood why his son Alexis said that about the lady. Remembering this mysterious dark-haired young man, our heroine was at a loss as to what he could tell his father about her. Finally, the Count released the bride's face from his tenacious hands. Linnea looked away worriedly. Turning towards the passage, the brown-haired woman noticed a young gentleman standing. It was Alexis. The question in his head was what he could tell his father about her. Addressing Miss by name, which made her flinch, the Count continued to say something. The elderly brunette offered to finally begin the long-awaited ceremony. My lady's mind was full of questions. Were all aristocratic weddings really like this? The priest waved the censer. The girl coughed a little from the smell of incense. She thought that she could not help but wonder about this question. Because of how intricate the Matei family's wedding traditions were. But she didn't have time to think about it. At that moment, her husband handed her the cup. There was practically no lighting at this moment. The brunette gave a traditional speech, holding a golden cup in his hand. At the end, he solemnly said that the blood of God would bind them with strong bonds. Looking into the glass, our heroine saw a bright scarlet liquid splashing viscously there. Taking the cup of drink with his hands, the bloody color after the master's words raised doubts. The drink looked exactly like blood, but this was their tradition. The girl took a sip without hesitation. As the liquid flowed down her throat, the lady realized what it was. Her eyes widened in horror. Clearing her throat a little, Lady Linnaeus instinctively stepped back slightly. She covered her mouth in horror and the realization of what she had just drunk. It didn't taste like wine at all. The Count, hovering over the girl, noticed her reaction. Touching the bride's face, he asked if everything was okay. The man's face showed no emotion. It was absolutely calm. A cold tone asked if the lady wanted to stop the ceremony. Staring in horror at those red eyes, her mind screamed, denying the desire to even be here. However, my lady thought about the consequences. What could happen if she refuses now? After all, she could be forced to return to her uncle again. Linnea's hands shook, stirring the liquid a little. She voiced her willingness to continue in a quiet voice. Pressing the glass back to her lips, the bride drank the liquid. Before this, assuring that everything was in order, Linnea recalled how she was sitting in the carriage and realized that she had come here absolutely not expecting a happy and joyful life. With horror, the brown-haired woman realized her situation. But the girl hoped that everything would be fine with her. Having finally emptied the glass to the bottom, Linnea removed it from her face. But she didn't let go of her hands. Wiping her mouth from the remnants of the drink with the back of her hand, she boldly assured herself that everything was definitely fine. Observing the decisiveness of the lady standing in front of him, the duke grinned contentedly. Taking his wife's hand in his own, he began to put on the ring. With Tiab's blessing, he declared them husband and wife. A slight rustling sound was heard. The count's face came closer to Linnea. The husband assured that he was infinitely happy. He was glad that the brown-haired woman became part of their family. He continued to put the ring on. Finally releasing his hand and removing his hands, the brunette simply said that she had become his dear wife. For some time, the girl in the wedding dress just looked at her husband. There was silence between them. Lowering her head again, the girl nodded slightly. She thought that she had passed the first test after all. A short distance away, a short-haired brunette with Mr. Alexis was watching all this. Participating as a guest at this ceremony, the thought flashed through the young man's head that this woman was very strange. On the way here, the lady should have already seen everything. And lifeless lands and also sick livestock. Miss Linnea was sold to Matei Castle, like all those wives who appeared here many times before her. However, remembering their recent meeting, Alexis wondered about the young lady's gaze. This girl was, like everyone else, sold. But for some reason at that moment, her eyes shone so brightly. Having completed the entire process and officially being married, our heroine, lifting the hem of her wedding dress, headed for the exit. At one point, the brown-haired woman's gaze fell on her stepson. The young man shuddered at this look. After which, without further distracting the stepmother, he hurriedly averted his eyes to the side. Taking a glimpse of this newly arrived lady, Alexis's heart was filled with emotion. He stood with his hands behind his back. Taking his newly made wife by the arm, his father walked towards the exit. He cupped his other hand. There was a heavy feeling in my soul that I couldn't describe. Already in the middle of the night, having taken off her bride's outfit, my lady was alone in the dark chambers. 
examining her fingers on one of which there was now a glowing wedding ring, the girl thought. I remembered the husband's words that he was infinitely glad that the lady became part of their family. And then he called her my dear wife. In her thoughts, she repeated the word family again. Suddenly a click was heard. At this sound, Linnea snapped out of her thoughts and twitched. It was unexpected. A brunette stood in the doorway with the door slightly open. She thought that now this man was her family. One of the Count's hands was behind his back. The other one was holding the door. A quiet creak was heard. The room was silent except for these sounds. Hidden in his hand, he held something resembling a leash, at one end of which there was a metal lock. A month earlier, other events were unfolding far away. Then the girl was carrying a basket of laundry. She asked if the man wanted to marry her off. The red-haired gentleman was sitting at the table and writing something on paper. He confirmed this. And he said that after working in the guild for so long, the young lady was far from being fresh. Resigned to her difficult fate, Linnea only asked who her husband was. And has everything already been decided? He assured that although the man was a little older, the future husband was an aristocrat. House Matai was a respected count family from the north. Only the word north echoed in my head. And also the question of why the count would marry someone like her. The redhead smiled maliciously and reminded that Linnea always wanted to leave this place. And she assured that now she had such a chance, perhaps the only one in her life. All those people needed was a healthy bride. They even offered them titles and properties. So the uncle assured that it was time for the girl to repay for all the years that the family looked after her. Now the stone on her wedding ring sparkled in the moonlight, releasing reflections. Her husband came closer to her and stood opposite her. He never took his hand out from behind his back. It also contained that thing with the lock. With his free hand, the Count wanted to touch her shoulder. Linnea looked away and then asked if she should have taken off her clothes. She stopped mid-sentence. Finally taking her by the shoulder, the brunette noticed the girl's confusion. He said that she shouldn't have been so unnecessarily nervous now. Due to the fact that her husband was much taller than the miss herself, she timidly stood up on her tiptoes. The gentleman told the lady to leave everything to him. Sharply picking up Linnea, he threw the young lady onto the bed. Then he plopped down next to him. Touching his wife's face, he looked intently into her eyes. The brown-haired woman's cheeks were flushed with a slight blush from embarrassment. The Count's face came even closer. But at one moment of these foreplay, her leg trembled. The lady realized that something was wrong at that moment. Her husband's red eyes watched her greedily from the darkness. She exhaled sharply from the sensations. One of the brunette's hands slid along the leg of the lady lying in front of him. There was something cold there, feeling a slight nagging pain. The Countess did not understand what kind of thing had snapped there. Sharply opening her charming eyes in horror, she was completely enveloped in animal fear about what could happen next. Pushing the brunette away from her, the girl stammered and began a sentence, asking what he was doing. Immediately grabbing Linnaeus's hand, Count Mathai asked his dear wife if she had already forgotten about the conditions of their marriage. After which he explained that her uncle was not at all against accepting his money. Wary, Milady shuddered. Leaning towards the young lady's face, the Count voiced the question of what, in her opinion, could happen to her if she did not cope with her marital responsibilities. Realizing the tragedy of the situation, Linnea realized that her husband was right. And remembering her childhood in a small room, she realized that they could also force her to return to the South. And if this happened at night, then again a terrible life would await her like that little girl. Noticing doubt in his wife's eyes, the brunette asked if he could still continue the work he had started. Her palm, which the brunette was holding, involuntarily relaxed, accepting her fate. The girl nodded in agreement. There was a click. The lock on her leg was finally and irrevocably fastened. There was no turning back for our heroine. Having finished the job and leaning towards Linnea's ear, the man whispered that everything was very good now. Afterwards, the brunette walked away like a window, and he assured that he did not expect much from her. He only hoped that his wife would remain immaculate and pious, as befits a countess. His voice was heard again in Linnea's head, that the girl should remain chaste and pious. Leaning on a slightly old book lying on the table, the count said that his wife must have heard about faith in Tiaba. She replied that she allegedly only knew that she was followed in the Inulaic Empire. In response, the brown-haired woman heard her husband's stern voice. Looking at the girl sitting on the bed, he said that the lady had so many new and unknown things to learn. The brunette approached the lady. Stuttering, she apologized. The man smiled and assured her that she had nothing to worry about. 
and that Sophia will help the lady in all this. Taking the book that Linnea's husband was handing her, he examined the strange cover. She heard that the Count was sure that they would become a wonderful family. But then the brunette added the following, that they would become a family they just had to find one faith. After these words, the lady's heart sank. Having received the official status of a countess, Linnea was already sitting in the dining room in daylight. A maid stood next to her along with Sophia. Genuine sadness was written on our heroine's face. She just indifferently poked the dish in front of her with her fork. Noticing that during the entire meal the brown-haired woman had not eaten a single piece, the maid asked if the food was to her taste. There she began to make excuses. Lowering her head, Linnea voiced the question. She just wanted to know whether the master or anyone else would join her. The brunette answered quickly. The family rarely ate together. Mr. Matei's day began very early and Mr. Alexis often skipped meals. Smiling nervously, the brown-haired woman said that she understood everything. And I thought that maybe it was better than eating in awkward silence. Observing this whole situation and without interrupting the lady, Sophia suddenly remembered something. She assured that Mr. Alexis was looking for the brown-haired woman. At the memory of the young brunette, the girl froze almost before reaching her mouth. Having not eaten any of the food, the young countess asked if Alexis was really looking for her. She was also interested in why he needed her. Our heroine had an alarming thought. She admitted that this could supposedly be connected with what the count told her about his son and his words. A smiling Sophia asked if the lady wanted to meet him. Concerned by this, Milady asked if this was normal. And when I heard a positive answer, I was happy. After thinking a little about where the young master could be now, only one place came to Linnea's mind. A light cape fell from Mr. Alexis's shoulders to the floor, thereby exposing his body. A beautiful, muscular, and toned back was visible. The brunette himself then took off his clothes. At this time, Mr. Alexis could only spend time in one place. Miss Sophia advised the lady to go down the eastern corridor on the first floor and find two large wooden doors. Linnea found these doors without difficulty. They were actually huge on massive iron hinges. The girl froze for a second and then carefully opened the door with a creak. After taking a couple of steps, the countess stopped. She was enveloped in steam that smelled of sulfur. The lady couldn't figure out what this place was. The next moment, her foot stepped into the water. Suddenly, a sharp voice asked who was here. Linnea shuddered in surprise and saw the vague outline of a male body in a couple. She recognized Alexis's voice. Trying to pull her leg out of the water, the girl began to apologize for the intrusion. The steam dissipated a little and the countess was able to see the young man. Her cheeks immediately flushed as her stepson's naked body was covered only by a towel on her hips. They stared at each other with a silent question. The guy was the first to ask what the countess was doing here. Linnea hesitated and began to make excuses that she was told that a relative was looking for her. The countess tried to take a step back, but her legs got tangled in the long skirt of her dress. She staggered and almost fell. In one quick movement, the man managed to grab her. Their gazes met for a moment. The girl slipped out of his strong arms and sat down. She was so scared and tried to apologize. Alexis was worried about her well-being and whether she was hurt. He carefully began to examine the girl's leg. And he tried to take off the shoe, but Linnea gasped painfully. The brown-haired woman hastened to assure that everything was fine because she just stumbled. Her gaze shyly slid over the naked male body. The countess did not expect to see her stepson so undressed. She averted her eyes. The Viscount stood up and apologized for his appearance. He was taking a bath. Milady was surprised. Alexis explained that this room contains communal baths and that steam is generated by the heated marble. This bathing method was brought by a relative from abroad. The man looked at Linnea and noticed that the girl's outfit seemed uncomfortable here since heat and steam were used to cleanse the body. Her ladyship tried to get up, but it turned out awkwardly and the girl again collided with the Viscount. He asked her not to move. Linnea staggered. The guy tried to hold her back, but his fingers got under the clasp and unfastened it several times with a hook. The Countess shuddered and pushed the guy away, assuring her that everything was fine with her. Alexis grabbed the girl's hand. He said that if her ladyship wants to be left alone with herself, then it is better for him to leave her alone. With wishes to enjoy the bath, he left the room. Linnea was burning with shame. After the door behind her creaked and slammed shut, she plopped down on the floor and covered her face with her hands. She's gone crazy. Suddenly, the countess was called out. 
She shuddered in surprise and turned around. A maid stood at the door. Milady asked how Margaret knew she was there. The girl replied that Mr. Alexis ordered her to take care of her ladyship. The maid immediately noticed that the mistress's dress was wet. She offered to help change clothes and touch the hostess's clothes. Linnea shuddered. She remembered the proximity of her stepson. The countess ordered herself to calm down. Her heart is only beating like that because he just scared her. But in my thoughts, there was already a memory of how the man damaged the clasp on the back of the dress. And the malicious worm inside was already sarcastically saying that maybe this is a normal practice for sons to help their mother undress. The woman slowed herself down again. She couldn't be distracted. Holding the damaged clasp at the back, Linnea pulled the maid's hand away from her and said that she had already finished and should return to her room. The countess was still calming herself down. She shouldn't worry about anything. She shouldn't let this unsettle her. Alexis entered his room and slammed the door. A maid was sitting on the table in front of him. With a malicious expression on her face, she asked if he liked it. The Viscount didn't understand right away. But then he guessed. So it was Sophia who sent the Countess. He did not understand what this deception was for. The maid was pure innocence. Quite directly, she noticed that it seemed to her that the lady was hungry for family love. The maid came close to the man. She looked at him questioningly and wondered if the apple was as juicy on the inside as it seemed on the outside. Alexis grabbed the woman's hand as she tried to hug him. He opened the door, put the maid out of sight and out of the room, and loudly closed the door. The man cursed angrily and hit the tree with his fist. Linnea's face and eyes never left the Viscount's head. He pressed his forehead against the door and decided that he would stop thinking about it. Linnea sat in the room at the table and read the writings of Theab. Milady remembered her husband's words about his hope that the girl would remain immaculate and pious, as befits a countess. The girl's hand froze with the page turned over. The lady remembered her meeting with the Viscount at the bathhouse. The Countess tried to analyze the case and realized that, having become Alexis's stepmother, she should have acted differently in today's situation. Her ladyship believed that writing should help her clear her mind. After all, in Tiab, inner peace is considered a virtue. On the next page of the publication, it was written that the first moon of repentance rises and sets on the eve of the 29th. It is necessary to renounce all sinful desires so that only the truth remains, the book said. The Countess's chest felt a pang at these lines. Sadly lowering her head, she decided that these were just games of her mind. Outside the window, there was the neighing of a horse and the clatter of hooves. The stranger was approaching the estate. The Count and his son and the maid came out to meet him. The man pulled on the reins and the horse neighed again. The rider smiled at the owners. He addressed the elderly man as a brother and said that he had not seen him for a long time. The Count looked sternly at his brother Walter. He should have been in the Imperial Palace, why is he here? The man dismounted from his horse and replied that this was not the time for idle chatter. The Viscount angrily smoothed his disheveled hair and said that the bastards from the Order of the Holy Knights were again muddying the waters. The Count was at a loss. Walter explained that he had been wary of the knights roaming around the north lately, and when they found the village of Silburn, his fears were justified. The order sent a report to the emperor, and he summoned the lord of the north, Edward Matei. The count became sad and covered his face with his hand. Everything happened faster than he expected. Alexis chuckled and asked Sophia if she understood what he was talking about. The maid shrugged. At this time, his excellency turned to his son, and appointed him in charge of the castle while he was away. And he also ordered me to keep an eye on my stepmother, since she had not yet settled down, Walter thought with curiosity. Brother once again found himself a new wife. I wonder how naive the girl is this time. The stranger looked at his nephew with a grin and teased him so that he would not think too much while the countess was away from her husband. Alexis looked angrily at his relative and replied that this would not happen. The count interrupted the squabble between his relatives a long journey awaited them. Walter agreed. Edward then ordered the maid to prepare the carriage. Linnea watched the men from the window. She wondered what everyone was doing at such a late hour. The carriage arrived. The girl guessed that the gentleman was preparing for a trip. Milady wondered, looking through the glass, what the household would think of her. Perhaps it is not appropriate for the Count's wife to stand here at the window. Her fingers trembled as they touched the cold frame. The countess took the lantern and decided to go downstairs. The front door creaked as Alexis entered the hall. He saw Linnea descending and headed towards her. The girl stared in amazement at her stepson ascending the steps towards her. 
the guy caught up with his stepmother and asked where she was going. Milady hesitated and replied that she saw the gentleman leaving, so she wanted to see him off. Alexis hesitated a little. He remembered his uncle and realized that it would be bad if his stepmother met him. So he said there was no need for it. The countess tried to object to her stepson because as his lordship's wife, the guy interrupted the lady and said that no one expects anything like that from her mother. When the Viscount called the girl mother, Linnea flushed and tightened her grip on the lantern handle. She tried to understand why he called her that for the first time right now. The girl got angry and dodged the guy. Her ladyship told him to go away. She decided to go so that he wouldn't think about it. Alexis said no and grabbed her hand. The countess dropped the lantern and it broke into pieces. The fragments cut Milady's hand and she gasped. Alexis got nervous and tried to figure out if his stepmother was okay. Linnea replied that it was just a small cut. The Viscount took her ladyship's hand to check. A small trickle of blood flowed from the hand and dripped onto the floor. The guy shuddered. His eyes turned red and he turned away sharply, staggering. A young man leaned against the railing of the stairs. He bent over slightly, the hand covering his mouth trembling. The girl called her stepson. He muttered through his teeth for her to leave. Linnea stood still. Then Alexis shouted at her to get out of his sight if she wanted to live. The countess shuddered at these words. Linnea was still standing on the stairs and had lost her injured arm. The Viscount could barely control himself. He swayed. The stepson asked his stepmother if she heard him. The man slid down the steps and again asked the girl to leave. The countess was at a loss. She sat down next to her relative and called him. The blood in the Viscount's veins began to pulsate more and more as Linnea approached. He didn't understand what was happening to him. The girl tried to touch her cheek, but he managed to grab his hand and pulled her towards him. Alexis was perplexed. He had never felt such a burning thirst. The closeness of the Countess, her warmth excited his receptors. The Viscount could not resist and bit the girl's hand. The taste of her blood in his mouth could not quench his thirst. So the man pulled her ladyship towards him by the back of her head and leaned towards her neck. A little more and he will try it. Young Matei almost felt the woman's tender skin with his teeth. Linnea's voice brought him out of his oblivion. She called him by name. The Viscount shuddered, driving away this obsession. Alexis tried to focus on the Countess. She sat across from him, safe and sound, and asked him how he was feeling. The man tried to blink. Everything around was blurry. The girl called him back, but the Lord was powerless. He closed his eyes and his hands fell limply to the floor. Alexis remembered one incident. Some time ago, Count Matei and his brother administered justice. Walter was holding a man who was begging for mercy. Edward was relentless. For violating the rules, he expelled the offending blonde from these lands. The Viscount grabbed the prisoner even more tightly, who begged not to drive him out. They took the man outside the castle walls into the forest. The Count continued his verdict. The blonde no longer deserved to live under the protection of society since he himself decided to become a monster in submission to his desires. The man transformed and escaped from Walter's hands. He ran towards the Lord, saying that they had better kill him. The Viscount swung his hand and grabbed the man by the neck so that the blood splashed a little on the nobles. The eyes of young Matei shone with a predatory fire, and his fangs gleamed in his mouth. He squeezed the unfortunate man's neck even more tightly, saying what an arrogant creature he was. Walter then lifted the culprit slightly causing the man's legs to jerk in the air. The Count stopped him and ordered him to make sure that the blonde reached the border in one piece. Edward entered the castle, where his young son was waiting for him. He asked where the guilty man would be sent. The Lord replied that it was where we all came from. The teenager was a little sad. He believed that there were demons in that place. His Excellency replied that the man knew this, but still betrayed them. A maid entered the room with bloody linen. Alexis was distracted by her. The Count continued that this made the blonde's action even more unforgivable. He drank human blood, even knowing the consequences. The guy glared at his father and shuddered. He wiped his mouth unconsciously. The Lord continued talking. Isn't it strange that we crave human blood so much, but when we satisfy our craving, then we turn into monsters who are unable to subjugate our own instincts. Perhaps this proves how vicious people can truly be. Linnea's voice pulled the Viscount out of his memories. He opened his eyes slightly. The girl asked if he could hear her. The man began to realize that he had lost consciousness. Alexis tried to get up. He wondered why these memories came flooding back to him. The Countess wanted to call a doctor. 
The man said he was fine. The Viscount gently took her ladyship's hand. The Lord wanted to apologize for the pain he caused. He just didn't want his stepmother to be drawn into the affairs of their family. The girl smiled and said that he had no need to apologize. It was just an accident. The man pressed a handkerchief to the wound on his hand. He was discouraged. Every time he was around Linnea, Alexis noticed how these anxious feelings grew in him. The countess looked questioningly at her stepson. The guy smoothed her hair. He did not want to become such a monster, and at the same time wanted to mercilessly tear the girl into pieces. The man climbed up a step closer to his stepmother and pressed his forehead to her head. The image of her husband appeared in Linnea's thoughts when his son came as close as possible to her lips. The couple was interrupted by Sophia's sarcastic voice. She asked what was happening here. Alexis and her relatives shuddered and turned to the maid. The maid stroked her chin and wondered with curiosity what these two could be talking about so intimately. The maid began to climb the stairs. She already openly asked the couple what the two were talking about so intimately. Linnea waved her hand and tried to justify herself. Sophia sniffed and noticed that the lady was wounded. The maid approached the countess and, hugging her a little, tried to take her away to take care of the wound. The girl tried to talk her way out of it and claimed that she was fine. The maid said that this would not do. Her ladyship's body now belongs not only to her. The housekeeper asked the Viscount for confirmation of her words. Alexis clenched the railing angrily. Sophia took the countess into the room and bandaged her wounded hand. The girl thanked. The maid said that it was not worth it and asked if the mistress had any more wounds. Linnea at first wanted to answer in the negative, but froze, remembering that she felt a sudden pain when she read the scripture. The maid clarified whether the pain only occurred while reading the book. Milady tried to work with her bandaged hand. There must be no point in that case. She's just been too stressed lately. Therefore, the countess's assumption that the writing is simply stupid. But Sophia turned to the lady and asked if she knew that Tiab's writings included four books. One of them contains the teachings of Tianus Verida, the creator god. And the lady was just reading the third part of this series, Lunava. This book talks about repentance, atonement, and sacrifice. Three virtues that holy people use to save others on their travels. Therefore, Luneva is read by those followers of Tiab who want to repent. They believe that God will cleanse their souls through pain. The maid noted that if Linnea felt something while reading the scriptures, then perhaps this was a sign that she had sins that needed to be repented of. The countess imagined Alexis's embrace and bit her lip. The girl bowed her head in confusion. Sophia approached her and asked if it was true that the gentleman asked her ladyship to study the holy scriptures. She lifted the lady's head by the chin. The maid continued to say that the count meant that if his wife failed her test, then she would have to leave this place, like her predecessors. Linnea was horrified and grabbed the maid's hand, whispering that this couldn't happen. Her ladyship remembered how her uncle locked her in a scary closet when she was a little girl. She can't go back there. The countess begged the woman. The lady wanted to know what to do. She was ready for anything. The witch chuckled. Say what you want, she asked. She came up with a plan. A week later, Linnea and the maid were drinking tea in the garden. The countess was reading the scripture, and when Sophia called her, she shuddered. The maid said that my lady had diligently followed Tiab's teachings for the past week, and her soul had become noticeably purer. The girl was happy. The witch, sipping tea, continued to say that the reduction in meals and hours of sleep had borne fruit. After all, they are rooted in laziness. She then suggested increasing study time. Her ladyship froze and frowned. She jumped up from her chair and said that as Sophia sees fit, since the girl doesn't have much choice. Suddenly, Linnea was struck by pain and she staggered. Her eyes grew dim. Her thoughts began to get confused and she didn't understand what was wrong with her. The countess fainted. Her ladyship was carried to her chambers. Alexis stood by his unconscious stepmother's bed. He clenched his fists and frowned. The Viscount asked the maid what she had done with her ladyship. Sophia was feignedly offended by the owner's rude words. She was merely helping my lady with her duties. The man interrupted her excuses. For God's sake, my stepmother lost consciousness. The maid stopped the master. Does he really not understand at all which of them is behaving inappropriately? Besides, for Alexis, more than anyone else, it shouldn't matter whether this woman dies or not. Because as with all the women before her, he is unable to save Linnea. Count Matei arrived at the Imperial Palace, the head of state received in the throne room. The emperor was glad to see Edward. He rose from the throne and walked towards the Lord. 
His Majesty exclaimed in a friendly manner and remarked that they had not seen each other for a long time. The subject knelt to greet the emperor. The emperor laughed at the display of the ceremonies. The ruler was in full dress, white ceremonial robes trimmed with gold cords, a fur-lined cape, a neatly trimmed beard, and styled blonde hair. The count believed that it would be right to express his respect to the supreme ruler of the empire. So he took the emperor's hand and brought it to his lips for a kiss. Suddenly, the lord was pierced by pain. He received a burn. Edward realized that he was traumatized by his majesty's ring. The emperor asked in surprise about the man's injury. His excellency confirmed, but it's not worth worrying about. Matei drew attention to the fine work of his majesty's new ring. The emperor praised him for his powers of observation. His majesty said that the silver for making the ring was brought from abroad, since this metal is very rare in their country. Most of the grains that the state has are still buried in the north. Edward confirmed this and added that silver could not be mined due to the structural integrity of the surrounding lands. The emperor replied that this was exactly what he was led to believe. The count was surprised. At this time, a servant entered the hall and said that Noah Johnson of the Holy Knights was asking for an audience. The emperor ordered him to be let in. Just then there were footsteps, and a young man with blonde hair walked in with a firm gait. He knelt before the ruler in greeting. The commander of the Holy Knights, Noah Jones, addressed his majesty with the words that he had been informed of the emperor's desire to see him. The monarch confirmed and continued that he could not ignore the contents of the knight's report. Therefore, he also summoned Count Matei to discuss this issue. The emperor offered to tell the lord about what Noah had seen in the north. The blonde began the story. Not long ago, holy knights explored the northern lands. By order of his majesty, they explored the areas near the silver mines. There, the detachment discovered the remains of a settlement that had been wiped off the face of the earth. The warriors continued to explore the territory. And to their surprise, they did not find anything that could interfere with the extraction of silver. The blonde concluded that the real reason for the lack of silver mining was the lack of safe working conditions. The emperor struck with his fist. This is unacceptable because the people of Inareka should not fear for their lives. The emperor decided to send holy knights to these lands. His majesty asked Edward what he thought about the presence of warriors in the northern lands until new miners were able to move into the territory. Count Matei was as reserved as always. The man thanked the monarch for his concern, but as the lord of these lands, he would rather take care of this himself. And since his lordship's brother Walter is the head of the imperial knights, it will be enough help for my lord if the emperor allows him to borrow them. Johnson stood up. He hoped the knights would be helpful. If one day the count needs help, the warriors will be happy to offer it. The commander extended his hand. Matei shook it with gratitude for the offered help. After an audience with the emperor, Edward went to see his brother. The lord scrubbed his hand for a long time after shaking hands with the knight. He was indignant that his majesty wanted to send knights to the north. Walter was also annoyed by the current situation. Every day those bastards from the imperial palace became more and more arrogant. He asked his brother if he planned to go north. The count put the handkerchief in his pocket and answered in the negative. My lord chuckled and remarked that it would be bad not to meet him, since he had come all the way here. At this time, Johnson watched the brothers from afar. He concluded that the lords were not going to leave immediately. Therefore, he informed his subordinate that they should visit Mathe Castle before the count returned there. The knight was shocked. He clarified with horror that only the two of them would go. The commander confirmed dejectedly. They must make sure that the Lord has taken the person as his wife. Alexis was in the library leafing through the scriptures, and God told the people that they must overcome adversity and achieve enlightenment in order to save the foolish. And on the day when your sacrifice frees you from the shackles of your body, I will become your guide to earth. It was said in the Book of Books. The Viscount slammed the publication shut. He wondered if freeing himself from the shackles of the body through sacrifice would mean death. The man looked at the closed book and realized that he knew little there, even though he was the heir to Matei. Alexis remembered the maid's words that for him, more than anyone, it should not matter whether this woman died or not, because as with all the women before her, he is unable to save Linnea. The Viscount clenched the scripture. He couldn't let Sophia's words affect him. There must be a way to stop the violence in this book. His lordship's thoughts were interrupted by a loud sound. The man threw the book on the stack and went to find out what it was. Linnea was sitting on the floor under an overturned table and holding her face with her hand. A red mark from the blow was visible on his cheek. 
The countess turned to Sophia in amazement. The witch stood with an innocent look. She sarcastically asked why her ladyship was surprised. Isn't that what the lady wanted? Linnea sat near the overturned chair and held her cheek. Sophia towered over her. She asked why her excellency was surprised. It was she who asked the maid for a simple way to study scripture. The maid came closer to the lady and continued to say that if the ascetic life seems too difficult to the countess, then she can always cleanse her soul through bodily pain. This is what the believers of the past did. The witch leaned close to the girl, instilling fear, and offered her help in cleansing the soul from sins. The lady crawled back a little and stammering tried to justify herself. It's just hard for her to get used to all this. The maid grabbed Linnea by the shoulder. She had never seen someone fail to repent for so long. Then the witch ran her fingers over the girl's cheek, wondering how depraved thoughts were hidden behind that face. The countess watched her actions warily. Sophia moved a little away from her ladyship. Since the lady's soul has not yet been cleansed, the maid waved her hand and said that she was even interested in how effective this method would be for the lady. The maid swung even harder. Linnea closed her eyes anticipating another blow, but Alexis managed to intercept the witch's hand. He growled at what she was doing. The Viscount menacingly demanded an answer from the maid. Sophia replied bitterly, Look who's here, the knight in shining armor. The man looked at his stepmother. He saw the mark of the blow on his face and his huge, frightened eyes. His jaws ground. His grace pulled the maid's hand and threw her away. He told her to get out of sight. The witch's face twisted with anger. She rubbed her injured arm and hissed, How dare you treat me like that? The Viscount pointed to her place. Has the maid forgotten who is the owner of the castle while the Count is not there? Sophia was shaking with anger. The gentleman advised the woman not to come into his sight until he gave his permission. The maid turned around and headed for the door. Alexis approached Milady and offered his hand to help her up. The witch was still burning with anger. She promised that his lordship would still regret that he had treated her this way. And the maid left the room, clicking her heels and loudly slamming the door. The Viscount stood opposite Linnea and wanted to know if she was okay. He tried to touch the girl, but she flinched. The man pulled his hand back. Why didn't her ladyship tell me that something like this happened? She definitely needed to say. Milady lowered her head. She believed that this was part of her duties as a countess. After all, when the maid said that she needed to repent of her sins, only one person came to the girl's mind. Alexis. She tried not to think about him, because it seemed as if she had committed a sin. As soon as Linnea read the scripture, the pain made her realize that she... The stepson asked how he could help. The girl asked him not to treat her so kindly. Tears welled up in her eyes, because when his grace does this, my lady feels her resolve weakening. Tears were already dripping onto the floor. Whatever happens, the countess has already decided to endure such a life. But because of Alexis, she wants to get away from it all. Her ladyship was already sniffling with all her might, and the Viscount did not understand what she was talking about. The man timidly touched his hands covering his face. Gently moving his hand away from his face, the stepson asked him not to cry. Pressing Linnea's hand to his chest, he said that she could not imagine how confused he was every time they met. Every elusive movement turns his lordship's head. This was different from what the Viscount felt when their gazes met. It's closer to despair. His grace seemed as if he would do anything. If only the stepmother would not shed another tear. Alexis gently rubbed the area of the blow. He will help Linnea. The man suggested leaving this castle together immediately. The stepson and stepmother ran holding hands through the trees and bushes. The sun's rays created a rainbow, shining through the foliage. The countess wondered if they were doing the right thing. After all, it's unclear what will happen when they escape. The girl remembered the maid's threat and froze. She knew her actions would put Alexis in danger. The Viscount looked questioningly at the countess when she stopped. She said thoughtfully that if they went too far, would they be too tired to return? The man squeezed her hand tighter. He asked the lady if she wouldn't be disappointed if they returned now. He continued moving. They should at least take a walk somewhere nearby. His grace offered to show him a place that only he knew about. Linnea nodded approvingly. Alexis took the countess to an amazing place. They stood on the cliff of a mountain. Below, the forest stretched to the horizon, in the middle of which the castle hid. The sun was setting behind the trees, playing with wonderful tints of color. The girl was amazed at the view. The Viscount asked about her impressions. Her ladyship was amazed by the beauty. Linnea was a little embarrassed and asked for forgiveness for changing her mind so unexpectedly. 
The man replied that everything is fine if it is true what her ladyship wants, but he wanted to know why she decided to stay. The countess hesitated and looked at Alexis. After all, even when she could not answer him right away, his grace did not put pressure on her. He gently held Linnea's hand. This sweet gesture reminded her of their first meeting. Her ladyship smiled. Then she came closer to the cliff and asked what she could see in the distance. The Viscount explained that this was one of the towns run by his family. Every spring a festival is held there. The girl asked about the festival. Alexis explained that this is the Bana Festival. When the seas that freeze in winter finally thaw, people from all neighboring countries and cities come together to trade throughout the month. People of all ages laugh and chat all night long. That's why it's called the Month of Eternal Light. Linnea thought it was a very interesting name. The Countess was interested in which part of the festival was the best. His grace began to answer, but stopped short, mentioning the name of Sophia. There was an awkward pause. Milady thought for a moment. She guessed that the stepson and the maid must be very close. Alexis denied. He said that once upon a time when they were children, the maid was much kinder. But now his grace no longer knows how to fix their relationship. He suggested not to be so upset about it. The girl put her hand on the Viscount's shoulder and said thoughtfully that isn't all families like that. Although it's probably not the right thing to tell her about this. The man grabbed his stepmother's hand and asked why she thought so. Linnea replied that she was a stranger to them, not from a noble family and of low origin. Then suddenly a gust of wind blew her hair over the girl's face. Alexis carefully brushed his hair back. For a moment they stood half embraced and silently looked at each other in the rays of the setting sun. The Countess was the first to break the silence. She asked if his lordship really wanted to hear the answer why my lady decided to stay. The Viscount thought for a moment. If he hears Linnea's story, his feelings for her will become so strong that a man will never be able to suppress them. Alexis squeezed her hand and nodded yes. He looked into her green eyes and realized that he wanted to know everything possible. The Countess and her stepson were still standing on the cliff. The sun had almost disappeared below the horizon, turning the sky orange and yellow. The wind blew, blowing the girl's skirts and hair. Linnea began to tell her story. She is originally from the South. Her parents were anthropologists, so her ladyship always felt that she would travel with them all her life. But her dreams were quickly dashed when her parents died in an accident. The orphan was taken into his family by his uncle. But the family of relatives did not like the baby and used her as a servant. Milady recalled one incident. My uncle was the owner of a ship on which he transported goods, so his entire family lived on the same ship during voyages. So one day Linnea was thinking, remembering her parents when she heard her aunt calling her loudly, calling her a useless brat. The girl shuddered and looked around. She saw a relative running towards her. As she approached, the woman hit the baby backhand. The aunt swore that her niece was good for nothing and that the numbers didn't add up again. The little countess tried to justify herself, but the woman did not listen to her. Some team members were kind to her and condemned her relative's actions. They even tried to make friends with the child. But Linnea was scared and did not let anyone near her. She couldn't rely on them. After all, after all, a team is not a family. Every time the girl was locked in the basement as punishment, she played in the dark, desperately wanting to grow up as quickly as possible. The little girl sat in that basement, all shrunk, hugging herself by her thin shoulders, and dreamed of how she could finally leave this place. She passionately wanted to start her own family, which would be full of loving people. That's why she wants to stay, because this is her home now. Milady still finds it difficult to learn about Tiab's faith, and the master and Sophia frighten her. But if she tries hard enough, she will become worthy of the title of countess, and then they can become a family. Alexis thought about it. He began to understand what kind of disgusting feelings awakened in him when he saw her. The Viscount touched the girl's cheek and gently pulled her, holding her head, continuing to stroke her face with his thumb. Neither he nor this desire will be satisfied with the game of family, but he is unable to deny himself this. These were just thoughts, and his lordship said out loud that of course he would help my lady and they would become a family. These words made Linnea's chest ache again. This feeling, the same pain that she felt while reading the scriptures, the girl pressed her hand to her chest and bent over a little in pain. The man held her ladyship by the elbow and asked what was wrong with her. The countess grabbed Alexis's hand. She couldn't afford to ruin a moment like this. Milady pretended to straighten up and said that she was all right. She was probably just tired. 
The Viscount suggested returning to the castle. The girl agreed. They approached the castle when it was completely dark, and the moon was already shining in the sky and the stars were shining. His grace inquired whether her ladyship's legs were tired. Linnea replied that such a walk was nothing compared to working at the guild. Alexis smiled and thanked him for the company. The countess looked at the man embarrassedly from under her half-lowered eyelashes and responded with mutual gratitude. She is the one to thank for this unforgettable day. Sophia watched the return of her stepmother and stepson from behind the window in the castle. She noticed that Alexis looked happy. The maid abruptly turned away from the window. She imagined how she and her mistress were praying near the angel's pedestal. She mentally pictured her smiling face. And then only a bloody stain appeared before my eyes instead of the countess. And a maid sits above him with bloodstains on her hands and clothes. She cried and screamed, No! The witch drove away the vision and clenched her fists angrily. Yes, laugh, Viscount, while you can. The full moon is coming soon. The bright sun was already fully illuminating the Mathieu castle. Linnea slept soundly in her bed. There was a knock. The girl blinked sleepily. She wondered how long she slept. The countess sat up in bed, sleepily rubbing her eyes. The knock came again. Milady decided that it was her maid, so she allowed her to enter. She sleepily asked Margaret why she didn't wake her. The door creaked open and Alexis entered the room. He said good morning. Her ladyship was sitting in bed in a light nighty and with disheveled hair. That's why she instantly flared up. The Viscount turned away and cleared his throat. He apologized. The Countess immediately pulled the blanket up to her chin. She asked what her stepson was doing here so early. His Grace hoped that they could have lunch, that is, breakfast, together. Linnea was saddened. She slept through everything. The man reassured her ladyship by saying that it was he who asked the servants not to disturb the lady. He looked at the sleepy girl with tenderness. Alexis said that the Countess deserves days like this. The Viscount asked for food to be served in the garden, if Linnea doesn't mind. Milady pulled the blanket even higher and fidgeted with her legs. She hummed that would be wonderful. His grace creaked the door and said on the way out that the girl should not rush and come when she was ready. As soon as the door slammed behind her stepson, Linnea plopped down on the bed. Under the blanket pulled up to her eyes, the countess began to think that it was becoming dangerous. She clutched the covers. Alexis offered to help her but it only makes it harder to cope with feelings. At that time, the man was also walking thoughtfully along the corridor. The weather was wonderful, so breakfast in the garden gazebo was a really good idea. The countess cut the salmon steak. The stepson drank tea and cakes. Linnea asked the Viscount if he had ever been to the chapel. He answered in the negative. The lady suggested that the Count must be very strict. That wasn't the point. It's just that His Excellency is very pious. Alexis explained that once a month, his relatives gather in the third-floor chapel for prayer. When his lordship was still small, his interest led him to the doors of the chapel. He opened the door there, but his father did not let him in, saying that he was not ready yet. Until now, the Count has never allowed his son to take part in prayer. Linnea muttered that His Excellency still considered the Viscount not ready. Then Milady laughed, because if the son does not live up to his father's expectations, then maybe he should, like her ladyship, study harder. Alexis froze for a moment. The Countess realized that she might have made a bad joke, so she was a little embarrassed. The Viscount rose from his chair and leaned towards the girl. He grabbed her chin and wiped the remaining crumbs from her lips. The man looked into her green eyes and licked the remaining grains from his fingers. Linnea blushed. Her stepson coughed and apologized. He just wanted to remove the crumbs and doesn't know what came over him. Alexis tried to change the conversation. As her ladyship must have remarked when speaking of the Viscount's training, he cannot stop it simply because of lack of interest. After all, his grace will be the heir to the Count, regardless of his wishes. The girl thought that perhaps her husband had a lot on his mind. Meanwhile, the stepson suggested reading the scriptures together. The Countess happily agreed, touching the man's hand, because it would be easier to learn this way than alone. Then she stroked the hand. Alexis smiled. He was worried that he would only get in the way, to which her ladyship replied that then she would work for two. Late at night, the Viscount sat at his secretary with a book of Holy Scripture and did not understand. He had read this chapter just a couple of days ago, but for some reason he didn't remember anything at all. This was not a temporary clouding. It felt like she had been erased from his memory. The man wondered why his father kept bringing home new brides. 
Perhaps this is due to the teachings of Tiab. Suddenly his gaze fell on one of the illustrations of the scripture. Alexis exclaimed, It was written there that only those who are sacrificed on the border of life and death will bear fruit. His grace had definitely heard this before. No, he had seen this before. The picture showed a woman holding her hands in prayer, entangled in a vine, and a man raising his hands to the sky. The Viscount remembered something similar from the past. Two men held Sophia's hands. The Count stood over them and asked them to make sure that she would not move. The maid cried and asked to stop. She screamed that she refused to eat it. Count Matei stood and watched as two men held Sophia's hands. The girl struggled and screamed. One of the men holding it was Walter. He ordered her not to rock the boat and squeezed her hands tighter. The maid asked to let her go. The maid managed to free herself and elbowed the Viscount, but could not keep her balance and fell. His lordship started bleeding from his nose. He got angry and called the girl a petty bitch. Edward ordered his brother to stop. He came closer and addressed Sophia. The Count leaned towards the maid and squeezed her face by the chin. His Excellency asked not to resist. The maid must accept the fruit born of the one who was sacrificed for her. This is our fate, said His Excellency. He forcibly put the red grain into her mouth and closed it. Sophia coughed. Little Alexis, who saw this scene, was shocked by what he saw. He hid behind the railing of the balcony and cowered in horror. The Viscount pushed the memory away and continued to look at the scripture. He tried to understand what the maid had eaten then. Suddenly, a woman's hand fell on his lordship's hand. It was Sophia. She asked if everything was okay. The man was surprised by her unexpected visit. Alexis looked sternly at the maid and clarified that he hadn't told her not to appear in front of him until his grace allowed. The maid smiled and playfully said that the master should not be so cold. The woman tried to take the scripture from the Viscount's hands. She assumed that he would have many questions for her. His grace did not know what to do. Sophia was right, but he doubted she would answer honestly. The girl cast aside her doubts, opened the scripture and began leafing through it. Then, leaning down, she took the man by the chin and said that she knew about his interest in the ritual. The witch began asking Alexis questions. Didn't he find it strange that he was the only one his father didn't allow into the ceremony? Has his lordship wondered why it is so difficult for him to study the scriptures? The man looked intently into the maid's eyes. He grabbed her hand, which was touching him. The Viscount asked what it means that sacrifices will bear fruit. The witch touched his cheek with her free hand. She replied, that isn't it obvious. If you manage to raise livestock, you will be rewarded with top quality meat. And she asked if he understood what she meant. The Viscount was confused. Sophia continued to say that you should not get attached to a sheep for the slaughter. Alexis jumped out of his chair and exclaimed that Linnea is not some animal. She is family. The maid sarcastically remarked that in this case, his grace looked at his family members very strangely. The man shuddered at her words. He remembered his stepmother's eyes. The maid chuckled and said that she wondered how the countess felt. At this time, her ladyship was in her room drying her hair with a towel after bathing. She noticed a folded piece of paper on the table. Linnea turned him around. It was a note from my stepson. The countess began to read it. The message said that the Viscount, while reading the scripture, noticed something strange. He understood that it was late, but could she come to him? Alexis continued his conversation with the witch in his room. He ordered her never to talk about Linnaeus in front of him. The maid tapped her finger on her hand, and she said that she wondered what would happen to the countess if her husband found out about this. The Viscount became angry, but Sophia continued to say that it wouldn't be good if just the mention of her stepmother would make Alexis so excited. She tried to take his hand, but the man flinched from her touch. The maid clung to his grace and said that the inability to suppress desire was the most serious of the vices in the teachings of Tiab. There was a crash and the pen and other writing instruments fell to the floor. It was the witch who pushed the Viscount and sat on top of his thighs. The man was shocked by her behavior. He asked if Sophia was sane and what she was doing. The maid leaned towards him and placing her index finger on his lips, asked him not to say anything because she was just trying to help him. Then the woman began to slowly stroke his chest, saying that if he only felt lust for his mother, then he needed to eradicate it before God found out about his sin. Alexis tried to break free. He called on Sophia to stop talking nonsense, and then he saw that Linnea had already entered the room. The girl was shocked by what she saw. Her eyes were wide and she covered her mouth with her hands from screaming. The Viscount could only shout her name. A small black cart was driving along a forest road. There was silence all around. 
broken only by the roar of wheels and the steady tramp of horses. Lord Mathay was inside, clearly unhappy. He frowned, squeezing his shoulders tightly with his hands. The recent situation still irritated him greatly, leading him to rage. A few hours earlier, two men were sitting in the Chancellor's estate. With folded arms, they patiently awaited the arrival of their interlocutor. With each passing hour, the tension in the room steadily increased. Walter couldn't stand it and angrily hit the table with his fist. His irritation with the Chancellor grew, because they had been waiting for him for a long time. Lord Mathay remained calm and asked his brother to cool down. However, he had no intention of doing this, and his anger continued to boil. Suddenly, the men froze when they heard a quiet creak. Their gazes immediately went to the front door, which was slightly open. There were muffled whispers coming from outside. Before entering the room, the man exchanged a few words with the maid. He sternly said that if she did not come out after the agreed time, she would need to immediately raise the alarm. The brown-haired man did not have time to finish. The door swung open sharply and the stern Lord Matei appeared before him. With a majestic air, he greeted the Chancellor. Frightened, the well-fed man cleared his throat nervously, trying to hide his fear. He noted that the Count's appearance here was quite unexpected for him. Wanting to quickly end the conversation, Lord Mathay went straight to the main question. He asked how serious the situation was. Hastily closing it behind him, the Chancellor leaned his elbows on the wall looking for support. He stated excitedly that the situation was worse than he could have imagined. The Count was aware that the Holy Knights were actually under the direct command of the Emperor. However, they recently discovered something very important. Having learned about what happened in the village of Silburn, the terrible truth was sooner or later to be revealed. The Lord asked if they could find out who gave the order to attack the settlement. The Chancellor awkwardly met his interlocutor's gaze. Anxiously, he explained that there was no physical evidence. However, the Emperor already had suspicions. The man added that their hypothesis was true only if it were not those monsters living across the border. His voice trembled slightly. The Chancellor continued that Lord Mathay was the only man in the North with such a strong army. She could very well wreak such destruction. The brothers listened to him attentively. Clearing his throat and looking away, the man noted the following detail. The mass murder of civilians is a serious enough charge to be stripped of a high title. Then the Chancellor explained that even in such a situation, you can try to come to an agreement. The Emperor needs silver mines. The Lord could well have offered him mining rights. Frowning, Count Matei could not stand the chatter and ordered the plump man to shut up. He jumped in place in surprise and froze in fear. The Lord said displeasedly that first the Emperor drove his family into a hole, and now he wanted to take away all the resources. As he spoke, he approached the Chancellor, who awkwardly backed away. Crashing into the wall with a crash, a tall man with a fierce look loomed over the brown-haired man. His menacing presence seemed to fill the room, instilling fear and uncertainty. Count Matei decided to remind him of everything they had done for the Chancellor. In a threatening tone, he hoped that he was not going to just sit back. The brown-haired man first opened his mouth in surprise, not believing his ears. Then, gathering his thoughts, he pursed his lips tightly. Taking a deep breath, Mr. Chancellor declared that the brunette was wrong. Having heard this, he raised his eyebrows in surprise and opened his mouth slightly, not expecting such courage. Pointing his finger at Count Matei, he declared that everything in this empire had always belonged to the Inareka family. He stood silently and resolutely, not showing the slightest emotion. In a more impudent tone, the brown-haired man stated that it was His Majesty who claimed the land, and not the Lord himself. His words even sounded insulting. Count Matei ground his teeth. Straining through them, he called the brown-haired man a greedy pig. His voice filled with anger and contempt. The Chancellor happily accepted gifts from him, and now portrayed a faithful servant. This pretense and hypocrisy only caused disgust in the man. Looking out the window, Lord Mathay clearly understood one thing. No matter how desperate everyone was, he was never going to give up the silver ores to the people. A sly smile appeared on the man's face. If necessary, he was ready to do anything, even an alliance with monsters on the other side of the border. Alexis and the headmaid were in the room. She imperiously unbuttoned his shirt, gently touching his chest, and he could not resist. At that moment, Linnea, his lover, came through the door and surprised them. The girl covered her mouth with her hand in shock, her gaze filled with pain. She froze in place, not believing that what was happening was true. Countess Linnea looked from the confused man to Sophia. She only smiled maliciously in response, 
as if enjoying what was happening. Everything in the girl's eyes became clouded. She couldn't understand what was happening around her, why they were here and why she suddenly felt so bad. Linnea sobbed, turned sharply and flew out of the room. Alexis began shouting after her that everything was not as she thought. Grunting, Sophia just rolled her eyes. The door swung open and the girl grabbed the hem of her dress, trying only to run away. She closed her eyes tightly, as if she didn't want to see or hear what was happening. The blonde rushed down the corridor, not understanding why the man called her into his room. Behind her, he could hear his desperate cries, but she didn't stop. Linnea turned slightly to look at Alexis. He was already shouting that under no circumstances should she go into the room to which she was heading, not paying attention to his words. The girl suddenly opened the door and burst into the room. Everything happened instantly, leaving no time for reflection. Countess Linnea stood in the middle of the room, groaning heavily. She rubbed her elbow, which had hit the doorframe hard when she entered. Then the girl looked up curiously and surprise froze on her face. Her mouth opened slightly, reflecting her bewilderment and shock at what she saw. There was a huge painting of a beautiful woman hanging on the wall. Much to my surprise, she looked exactly like the heroine, as if she had stepped off the canvas into reality. At that moment, Alexis arrived, breathing heavily. With her back to him, the girl asked who the individual in the picture was. The brunette awkwardly looked away. In a hushed tone, he explained that it was a portrait of his mother. Now everything has become clear. Linnea understood why Alexis reacted the way she did. Although she caused them a lot of trouble, they still remained on her side. The girl also realized why everyone was so kind when she wanted to join their family. Everything that was happening finally made sense. Touching the painting, Linnea quietly said that they needed their mother, not her. Her voice began to tremble, reflecting her growing excitement and anger. Alexis once again tried to explain everything, but turning to him, she interrupted him. There was determination in her tone. The girl frowned, her eyebrows knitted together and her lips pursed tightly. With bitterness and betrayal, she said that all this time they had been lying to her. Alexis and the Countess continued to sort things out near the portrait of his mother. The Viscount asked Linnea how she could accuse him of lying, but the girl did not want to listen to him. She turned around sharply with the intention of leaving. She said it's okay and she understands. This was not the first time this happened to her. The Countess remembered how some time ago, when she was still working for the Guild, she fell in love. The girl was rearranging bags of goods when she was called to dinner. She replied that she would come over now. The guys on the ship were teasing her, asking if she wasn't going to meet that guy today. The girl became embarrassed and asked to stop laughing. Everything is wrong. The boys made fun of the young lovers and said that they envied them. Linnea smiled and replied that you were doing the right thing, and she ran off to meet the guy she liked. The lover decided that he was probably waiting for her behind the house, as always. When she peeked around the corner, she froze in place. The girl saw her boyfriend kissing another, and this other one was her cousin. Linnea hid around the corner and heard the couple's further conversation. The sister asked the guy if he was sure that they should do this. After all, she knew that he was courting Linnaeus. The guy chuckled. He was just using her poor cousin just to get closer to her. Why did he need such a street child as this orphan? He only wanted her, the heiress of the guild. The countess stood and looked at Alexis. What a fool she was. After all, deep inside, she always knew that no matter how expensively she dressed up, she would never be noble. Linnea squeezed the skirt of her dress tightly in resentment. She remembered the count, then his meeting with his stepson. After all, they are the ones who will never be together. But the lady wanted them to at least be a family. Tears dripped from her eyes onto the floor. The girl said, wiping away tears, that she did not want to burst into the Viscount's room. The countess apologized for disturbing her and said that next time she would knock louder. The Viscount replied that she really thought that there was something between him and Sophia. My lord wondered why the lady did not want to listen to him. After all, the only person dear to him is Linnea. Her ladyship did not believe his words. She thought he was lying. The girl cried and asked not to try to disgrace her even more with flattery. Alexis tried to appeal to his stepmother. Linnea burst into tears. The lady insisted that it was not her he wanted. After all, she is just a commoner and an orphan. She has nothing. And the Viscount needs his mother, his real family. The man looked at the Countess with bewilderment and asked not to speak like that, stamping his foot. He came closer to her and added that she had no idea how he felt. My lord grabbed his stepmother by the shoulders and pressed his head to her forehead. He tried to tell the girl that when she says something like that, 
Linnea didn't let him finish. She touched his face with her hand and asked if he had ever considered the countess part of the family. Not someone else, but her exactly as she is. Alexis thought about it. Never. He had never thought that way about his stepmother. Milady bowed her head, tears dripping from her eyes. The man gently stroked her hair. At first, the Viscount also decided so. As the Countess said at first, he thought he was attracted to her because she resembled his mother. But Linnea's smile is unlike any he's ever seen before. She is so bright that it is impossible to capture her on canvas and so charming that she infects everyone around with happiness. His grace pressed his face to hers and looked into her eyes. Her smile belongs only to Linnea. The stepson kissed the girl. Then he exhaled and continued speaking. Alexis soon realized that his feelings for the Countess were not the same as those he usually felt for his stepmother. And there, on the cliff, when her ladyship asked if they could become a family, the Viscount did not want to dash her hopes. Because I've been lying to myself all this time. His lordship asked the girl if she thought it was disgusting. He held her head in his hands, combing through the strands of her hair. Linnea looked at the man with her green eyes and knew that she shouldn't feel joy from his confession. But she couldn't help but reach out her trembling arms and hug him. Together they seemed to lift off from the ground. The countess pressed herself against him with the thought that he needed her, and no one else. The lovers kissed deeply. Late at night, when the moon had fully come into its own, filling everything around with light, Count Matei and his brother drove up to their castle in a carriage. Only Sophia met him near the central gate. The maid opened the carriage door and greeted the master. She bowed and said that she had been waiting for him. Edward got out of the carriage and looked around. He did not expect that his wife would meet him, but he hoped that he would see his son. His Excellency asked where he was. And it's true what the Countess and Viscount are doing now. At this time, the stepmother and stepson were kissing passionately upstairs near the portrait of Alexis's mother. The atmosphere became increasingly tense. The man sharply grabbed Linnea under her hips and lifted her, pressing her even closer to him. The girl exhaled and looked into the Viscount's eyes. His grace asked if she regretted it. The Countess gently stroked the back of his head, then cupped his face and kissed his cheek. The Viscount flushed. Their eyes met again and they kissed. Without looking away from each other, the lovers approached the room, and Alexis opened the door, where they immediately plopped down on the bed. Continuing to kiss the Countess, the man gradually began to untie the laces of the dress. When his lips descended on the girl's neck, she shuddered with pleasure. The Viscount sank lower and lower to his bare chest. He rose a little to take off his shirt. Linnea admired the man's naked torso, then reached out and touched his chest. Alexis's skin was so cold and soft. His grace grabbed her hand, raised it to his lips, and kissed it. The Countess blushed. Then he pressed her ladyship's hand to his face. Little did my lady realize how long Alexis had to wait for this moment. She lay in front of him, all so hot and half-naked, and stretched out her arms for a hug. The Viscount kissed the girl back. Linnea's fingers slid along the man's back, caressing him. The stepson lowered himself to his chest. His hand, stroking the girl's hips through the fabric of her dress, raised her leg to press even more tightly against her. The bed creaked under the lovers. Alexis continued to caress the Countess's already naked thigh, rising higher and higher. Suddenly his hand came across a belt with a lock. Her ladyship froze. She was embarrassed and quickly covering herself asked to wait. The Viscount was at a loss. He pulled back a little and clarified whether his father had ordered this. Linnea turned away. The man got angry and said he would tear it up. The girl covered his hand with hers and explained that if he breaks this device, they will be revealed. Suddenly, they heard the Count's voice calling his wife. He was already approaching the door of the room. The lovers froze in anticipation of the inevitable. The door opened with a creak. The lock clicked. The door opened with a creak and Count Matei entered the room. The room seemed empty. Edward was a little discouraged. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a girl's voice was heard greeting her master. She looked a little disheveled. The Countess was not expecting her husband today. My lord asked the girl where she had just been. Linnea replied that she was in the bathroom. The man noticed that his wife was holding the strings of her dress. The Count approached the lady and pulled back her hair, exposing her neck. Milady shuddered. The neck was a little red. His Excellency chuckled and removed his hand. He turned around and silently walked towards the bed. The girl was scared. Edward abruptly tore the covers off the bed. But then there was a knock on the door. 
After the gentleman called out who was there, the door opened and Walter entered. The Viscount said that Sophia wants to talk to him. My lord was surprised and looked at his wife. Could it really be right now? Linnea turned away. The Count, leaving the room, wished his wife good night. Milady gasped and apologized. When the door closed behind her husband, the Countess slowly slid down the wall to the floor. Sighing with relief, she touched her lips. My lady understood that she could not continue to hide her feelings. Alexis looked at the open window of his stepmother's bedroom from outside at the foot of the castle. He remembered how his beloved was scared. The man tried to calm her down. Linnea was afraid to even think what would happen if her husband found out that they were together. His grace said he would go out through the balcony, and once again he assured the girl that his father would not catch them. The countess still had doubts and considered it dangerous. It wasn't that her ladyship didn't believe her stepson, but what they were doing. The man grabbed her in his arms and hugged her tightly, calming her down. Still in her lover's arms, Linnea asked if they were doing the right thing. Alexis replied that they were only being honest with each other and did nothing wrong. He hugged his stepmother even closer to him. The Viscount understood her fear, so at least he needed to remain steadfast. His grace gently took his beloved's face. He looked into her eyes and said that only God can tell her what is right and what is wrong. And then he kissed her. Alexis asked the Countess not to close her heart until she received judgment from the Almighty. He continued the kiss, knowing that he would protect her at all costs, even if he had to disobey his father. In another room of the castle, the Count and Walter met with Sophia. His Excellency was irritated. He didn't understand what other urgent news couldn't wait until he rested. The maid looked at the moon through the glass window. She feared that the young Viscount might ruin the plans. Edward didn't understand what the maid meant. If only the master had seen how his son cherished a human bride. While the Count and Walter were away, Alexis tried to help the Countess escape from the castle. The Viscount grinned doubtfully. Was this really true? Matei clutched his cane tightly and noted that this was impermissible. The first ritual was approaching. Sophia agreed that the first moon of redemption was coming, which would rise on the 29th. His Excellency became thoughtful and ordered the maid to make sure that Alexis took part in the rituals from now on. He will personally inform his son about the duties that he must perform as heir. The maid, illuminated by the moonlight from outside the window, chuckled and agreed that this was indeed a great idea. The next day, the entire Matei family gathered in the dining room for lunch. The Count, as expected, sat at the head of the table. On his left hand sat his wife, and on his right his brother and son. Sophia poured drinks. The Countess exchanged glances with Alexis, who smiled back at her. Edward noticed that this was the first time the whole family had gathered together at one table. The Count's brother, looking at his daughter-in-law, noticed that it was high time. He chuckled, remembering the man who came to the master that night. The young Viscount reached for his glass and said that the maid had said that his presence was mandatory here. Perhaps the father wants to say something, Matei confirmed. Sophia poured wine into His Excellency's empty glass. The Lord began to talk about how almost a month had passed since Alexis's mother arrived here. On the last day of repentance, they will perform an introductory ritual for her, in which the Count's son must also participate. The guy was surprised. My lord replied that it was time for him to learn the duties of an heir. Alexis frowned but replied that he understood. Linnea, watching her stepson, did not understand why he looked so worried. He should be happy because he was finally allowed to take part in the ritual. Suddenly the girl saw a piece of paper under the plate. She carefully took it out and opened it under the table. It said, Meet me in the garden after. The countess looked questioningly at the guy. Walter carefully watched his daughter-in-law. He noticed the lovebirds' mutual glances and narrowed his eyes. After dinner, my lady walked carefully through the garden, constantly looking around. Suddenly, from behind the bushes, she was suddenly grabbed by the hand and dragged deeper into the garden. It was Alexis. He held her close to him under the tree. Linnea was afraid that someone else had left the note. The guy apologized. He was just worried about how they broke up last night. The stepmother was fine, but she asked why he was worried at the table. The Viscount thoughtfully replied that everything was fine. They stood hugging each other under the spreading branches of a tree, the wind gently rustling the leaves. Alexis felt like he was in a dream, being so close to his beloved. He approached her for a kiss, but Walter's voice interrupted them. He looked for his daughter-in-law and called her. The doves shuddered. Linnea began to whisper in a whisper that his grace would quickly hide. 
but the guy didn't want to leave her alone with her uncle. The young Viscount squeezed the girl's hand, but she said that it would be much worse if a relative found them together. The lady asked him to leave again. The steps were getting closer. Walter came out from behind the tree. He noticed that the countess looked worried, so he asked if she had just had any company here. Milady controlled herself and confirmed that she was alone. She asked the man why he was looking for her. Linnea remarked that she did not know his name. The Viscount came to his senses. He had completely forgotten to introduce himself. He leaned over and took the Countess's hand, kissed her fingers and introduced himself as the Count's younger brother, Walter Matai. The girl released her hand and said that she was glad to meet the gentleman. The man smiled and suggested calling him by his first name because it sounded more intimate. Linnea flushed. How can he suggest such a thing? Walter interrupted her and said that he was not here for pleasantries. He showed a crumpled note. It seems the countess dropped it and he came to return it. The lady was surprised and frightened. After all, she threw this note in the trash when she left. She nervously clutched the hem of her dress, not understanding how this piece of paper ended up in her husband's brother's possession. The man sarcastically remarked that such outrageous behavior was not at all suitable for a faithful wife and he would like to know who the impudent scoundrel is who dares to desire the countess. The girl staggered. She didn't understand what her brother-in-law was talking about. Walter leaned towards her, shaking a note in front of her face. He understood everything and was very interested in what would happen if he showed this to his brother. Walter wanted Miss to tell him the truth. He was interested in the girl's companion, who had successfully retreated. From such an onslaught, the brown-haired woman backed away in fear. She was frightened by the thought that her brother-in-law could find out the truth. Continuing to hold a small piece of paper in front of her face, Walter assured that the lady was like an open book. The husband's brother approached her face. The young lady was very scared. He began to whisper something in the lady's ear. From the outside, they looked like a dating couple. It looked a little strange. This man scared the brown-haired woman. Don't say anything. Miss listened to Walter until the end without interrupting. He said that he would have liked this arrangement better. Red eyes, the same as those of her brother, looked triumphantly behind the lady's back. She was tense. There was a rustling sound. The brunette moved a little away from his companion, and he assured that he said everything he wanted. And now he wanted to leave. He turned around, leaving the lady alone with her thoughts to reflect on his words. He claimed that they would meet again soon. Astonished and slightly discouraged, Linnea looked after the departing gentleman. His steps were heard, holding that note in her hand and rereading it again. Our heroine wondered whether her brother-in-law really knew about their secret. Linnea thought that in the future they should have been more careful. Suddenly a man's voice pulled her out of her thoughts. The young man asked if she was okay. The brown-haired woman shuddered involuntarily. The gentleman in a luxurious black jacket came closer to the girl. The brunette claimed that she had noticeably turned pale and that bothered him. When Alexis noticed with what fear the young lady looked at the piece of paper in her hand, he immediately guessed. But I decided to clarify first. Stuttering, the lady began to make excuses. She said that she threw away the note, but I didn't think that a man would find her in a wastebasket. Afterwards, Linnea began to apologize. Taking that unfortunate piece of paper from her fragile hands, Alex said that there was no need to apologize, that omnipresent gentleman was always interested in his father's brides. Irritably clutching this note in his fist, the young man assured his companion not to worry. Throwing a gentle glance at Linnea again, he assured her that after all, her uncle had not seen them together. Therefore, it will be difficult to prove anything. Drowning in the young man's arms, the countess nodded in agreement. Alexis stroked her hair gently. After some time, Milady was again at the Matea estate, and she thought about her own thoughts. The guy turned out to be right, although she didn't know the reason. Well, Mr. Walter never told her husband anything about what happened in the garden. The relaxed brown-haired woman was in her chambers. At this time, the maid was carefully styling her hair. At the thought that several days had already passed, but nothing had happened, the girl interrupted her. I turned to the lady. The maid said that His Excellency wanted to convey some message to her. Remembering her husband, she shuddered. Picking up some other brush to continue her work, the maid explained. The husband wanted to see her in order to prepare for today's ritual. This action was supposed to take place today at midnight. The count wanted his wife to cleanse her body and soul. Being in that bath again, the thought occurred to Linnea that it was as warm here as before. 
Her cheeks turned pink when she suddenly remembered what happened the last time she was here. That day, my lady was too embarrassed and could not even really go into the water. She thought she should have relaxed this time. Snatching Linnea out of her thoughts, a low male voice was heard behind her. He called the lady by name. Noticing again that the young gentleman was almost completely naked and only a towel hung on his hips, the lady became embarrassed. The embarrassed countess screamed in fright. Then the girl looked away so as not to stare at him. Linnea apologized, and she insisted that she supposedly thought that there was no one here. Covering her face with her hand so that the young man would not notice her embarrassment, she began to mutter something. Here he extended his hand and touched his companion's shoulder. His hand slid first along the lady's neck, after which she slowly descended onto the fair shoulders. The gentleman interrupted all absurd attempts to object, and he said that he also came to cleanse himself before the ritual. Looking into her green eyes full of embarrassment and surprise, Alexis guessed that she was here for the same thing. Releasing the body from under his hand, the young man clarified. He thought that after what happened that day, Linnea was now uneasy being around him. Without waiting for any sensible answer from his interlocutor, he assured that he had already finished swimming and that he would leave first. Milady was clearly worried about something. She wanted to tell the guy about it. However, I was afraid of something. Stretching out her hands to him, memories of that conversation in the garden with Walter suddenly surfaced in her memory. His words were full of threats. The brother-in-law said that her first ritual would soon take place. Linnea had to behave well, of course, if she didn't want problems. From indecision, the girl's hand clenched into a fist. In doubt, she wondered what to do next. The brown-haired woman desperately wanted to tell Alexis that everything was fine, but anxious thoughts wouldn't let her go. While she was thinking, the gentleman moved further and further away. The countess was incredibly afraid that they might still be seen together. However, despite all her fears, my lady firmly decided. Her desire to touch the brunette was higher than her fears. Therefore, in order not to miss her last chance, she ran up to the young man and wrapped her arms around his waist from behind. Alexis himself was surprised at this impulse. With a little hesitation, he said the girl's name questioningly. Various thoughts were racing through her head. Despite everything, Linnea wanted her companion to hug her after all. At that moment when her hands closed in a lock near his navel, he couldn't even finish the sentence out of embarrassment. The question of what she did was left hanging in the air. Peering into Alexis's voice, Miss raised her trusting gaze and asked if he would stay with her. It was already dark night outside. Someone's quiet grunting could be heard. The blonde young man called out to the commander. There was another guy standing next to the blonde. He asked Evan if he would like to take on the role of commander for a while. Scratching his head, he replied that this was not the time for jokes. Afterwards, he added that the scoundrel Walter had not yet even begun the search of the North on the orders of His Majesty. And as for the information about his fiance, which the blonde recently asked for, he also had an answer. As it turned out, one witness had seen a young girl heading towards his castle about a month ago. Surprised that it was at that very time, the blue-eyed young man repeated the last words. There was a rustling sound. The young man on horseback raised his head to the sky. Then he began to peer. A white circle glowed in the sky. This was the first moon of repentance. She rose and set only on the night of the 29th. The blonde realized that today that fateful date had already arrived, and he said that that woman was now in danger. Meanwhile, in the dark and inhospitable Matei estate, the brown-haired woman carefully followed her husband along the long corridors. Meanwhile, during the entire time, Count Edward did not utter a word. Therefore, the girl could think in her own way. She wanted to see the chapel, and she hoped that Alexis was already waiting there. At one point, tearing his companion out of his thoughts, the brunette suddenly turned to his wife. A question was heard. Did the young lady remain faithful to the principles of Tiab's teachings? Clutching her hands because she was nervous, Linnea muttered something unrelated. After which I asked myself a question. When was the last time she read the scriptures? Suddenly she remembered a recent event in the bathhouse and the way she asked the young man to stay with her, how she and Mr. Alexis became close. After this, my lady deliberately pretended that she did not know the doctrine. So now I am at a loss. Should she still confess, or could it be a mistake? Having finally decided to answer, after standing in silence for some time, Linnea answered in the affirmative. Observing her reaction, the husband clarified whether it was true. Then he chuckled. It all amused him. There was a click. 
a man's hand in a white glove was opening the lock. The Count expressed the hope that his wife would not disappoint him and their family. While waiting for the action, the brown-haired woman did not answer anything. I just watched the opening of the mechanism. At that moment, she heard a creak. Linnea walked along a dark path that ran across the entire hall. Some people were already standing in the distance. Their footsteps echoed in the room. The moment the couple began to approach, almost everyone present fell silent in anticipation. Mr. Alexis, who was standing with this crowd, cast a worried glance at the girl. Seeing that the young man was also present, the brown-haired woman returned his gaze but did not show it. When Linnea again heard a stern voice asking her to go through, she mechanically complied with the requirement. His Excellency stood near the statue, and he said that she was created in the image of the pilgrim Tiaba. Now, in order for a stranger to become part of their family, during the first ritual he must prove to her that he has been cleansed of all filth. If the lady sincerely accepted the faith, the pilgrim will cry tears of atonement for Linnea. The brown-haired woman simply looked at the statue for a while. The husband ordered to put his hand on the marble cheek. Without really thinking about it, the lady extended her palm towards the sculpture. There was fear in her eyes. At this moment, her heart was beating wildly. The pounding of my heart echoed in my ears. She suddenly remembered all the moments of the time spent with Alex. The image that came to mind especially vividly in Linnea's mind was when the young brunette kissed her. The lady was very worried. But the mistress's hand nevertheless lay on the snow-white surface of the statue. Everyone present froze in anticipation. Edward Matai noticed this and became furious. His eyes narrowed and his jaw clenched until he heard a grinding sound. The enraged man turned to Sophia standing at a distance. The girl shuddered. First she apologized and then she started making excuses. Having picked up the dress, the brunette approached Linnea. She asked how this was possible. After all, the lady spent hours reading the scriptures. At this time, Alexis quietly approached them from behind. Separating the maid from his beloved with his hand, he declared that it was enough. The red-eyed young lady raised her gaze to the master in rage. But Sophia really couldn't say anything. Emotions overwhelmed her. At this time, the husband came closer. Agreeing with his son, he argued that there was no point in arguing about anything now. The count declared that those who failed to repent would bear no fruit. A special weapon was visible in his hands. The strap and chain slipped in my hands. The phrase followed that, however, such could wash away their sins until they achieved the pleasure of the Lord. The young lady's eyes widened in fear. She was almost shaking. The lady was alarmed by everything that was happening. In response to His Excellency's order, Voltaire pulled the countess towards him. The man reacted so quickly that Linnea didn't even have time to really understand anything. At one point, the brown-haired woman's hands were already tied. The string wrapped around her wrists surprisingly quickly. For some time, the girl tried to fight. She begged to stop, but Walter had already secured her around the sculpture. His nephew was also outraged. Noticing such a violent reaction from his son, His Excellency asked if there was something wrong. Stammering, Alexis replied that it was impossible to do that. At that moment, the brown-haired woman's eyes, full of despair, looked at her lover. This hopelessness made the young man very worried. Standing to the side, a sound was heard as if something was cutting through the air. The brunette saw this moment as if from the outside. Then the whip struck the first blow. Linnea tried not to think about how painful it was. Tears rolled down her cheeks. But it didn't stop with just one blow. After this, the victim heard clicks again. The girl's body was burning with fire. Scarlet streaks of blood were already visible on her back. At one moment, the thought flashed through whether this really freed her from her sins. But suddenly, the brown-haired girl heard something happening behind her. She also noted that the subsequent blow did not occur and dared to look back. At that moment, her lover turned against his father. Alexis tried to snatch this unfortunate whip from the hands of the Count. The young man's eyes were full of determination. He had no intention of watching his beloved suffer. A sharp sound reached the young master's ears. The whip cut through the air with amazing speed. Alexis watched this with eyes full of horror. He didn't understand what the scene was that was unfolding in front of him. The father again raised his hand in which the weapon lay. The brunette thought that he was obliged to stop the man, but this had to be done immediately. Turning his head around, Alexis turned his attention to other people. Everyone present here almost laughed. The question arose in his mind as to why no one did anything. Tearing himself away from them, the young man turned his gaze to his uncle standing nearby. He watched with a grin. Only now did he finally realize the whole truth. It turned out that only the true essence of the ritual was hidden from him and Linnea. 
breaking his nephew out of his thoughts about what he needed to do. Walter touched the guy's shoulder. There was a crazy expression written on his face. The man's mouth broke into a smile. He said that they were very excited by the crack of the whip. His Excellency continued to beat the lady. My uncle said that the fear and blood of people gave them boundless joy. At this moment, the brunette's heart was pounding furiously from worry for his beloved. Considering this in his own way, Walter said that the beating of his nephew's heart was proof of this. Trying to justify himself, Alexis began to mutter that this was not true at all. Out of anger, he clenched his hands into fists. After which, leaving the abnormal relative, the young man ran straight to his father in order to take some measures. At this moment, he shouted to his uncle that he was not at all like all of them. After which, he began to take the whip from the count father. Alexis's eyes were full of determination. Trying to stop these abnormal actions, he began to beg his father to stop. Edward Matai also became furious at this action. The son should have been on his side and not defended this young lady. Grinding his teeth, he began to pull out and take away his whip from him. The young brunette did not want to give it up. However, the count still turned out to be stronger, despite his older age. He questioned how Alexis dared to stand in his way. This time, the stately gentleman raised his weapon to strike not at his wife, Scarlet drops dripped onto the cold floor. For some time, the young man just looked at his father in silence. Then he turned his gaze to his wounded hand. Blood was also flowing from his cheek. Interrupting this blatant discussion, Assistant Sophia, having checked the brown-haired woman, notified that she had lost consciousness, and she asked if she needed to be woken up. Approaching his wife after this, Edwin nudged the air with his shoulder. Despising his only son, he ordered him to move away. Taking his wife, who had already been unconscious for some time, he pulled her hand in the direction of the statue. Count Matai had intentions after this harsh punishment to see if her sins had changed. He placed the girl's pale palm on the sculpture's cheek. Now, finally, all sins were completely fulfilled. As a sign of this, scarlet blood flowed from the eyes of the white marble maiden. After this, His Excellency was delighted. He declared that they had now completed the ritual, and he asked the maid to take the lady away. Immediately carrying out the order that came to her, Sophia walked up and lifted her mistress by the arms. Then she picked her up. Despite the apparent fragility, the maid was able to do this without much effort. Delighted at this turn of events, the maid left with a joyful smile on her face. At that moment, leaving the room in which, as the guy found out today, such terrible things were happening, the girl did not even look at him. Finally left alone in the room with my own father, it was time to talk. For some time, he collected his thoughts. The angry young man began to speak. Now he understood what his father did to people, or rather, with the brides he brought here. Since at first the count had his back to him, he turned over his shoulder, and he asked what Alexis didn't like. And he said that he himself knew that their family and environment were not ordinary people. Now he noticed that fresh scratch on his son's cheek. It was applied quite recently, but has already completely healed. Edwin said that their family managed to preserve its essence and retain extraordinary strength. And all this is just thanks to a small seed of blood. Repentance, atonement, and finally sacrifice. And only those who faithfully followed the instructions of the Lord could create this great gift. But now the question arose of how to receive this gift. As it turned out, the only way was to sacrifice someone. Now Alexis remembered the old words. He quoted, only those who were sacrificed on the border of life and death bore fruit. The meaning began to dawn on him. This expression was not just a simple metaphor. Therefore, the countess had to die. In response to this ridiculous question, Count Matei ordered his son to wake up. It was only his fault that he turned a blind eye to it, although there were plenty of opportunities to find out the truth. Pondering these words, the young man did not understand what his father meant. He began to ask, but the count interrupted him. In response, without giving a clear answer, Edwin asked a question. He was interested in the idea of why Alexis was called here today. At first, the young man boldly admitted that he was finally worthy of it. But I heard a negative answer. Dad grabbed his shoulder. Despite all this, that woman, Linnea, was already ready. Laughing in his son's face, the brunette filled him with fear. Looking into Alexis's bright red eyes, the Count gloatingly asked if he still didn't understand what was happening. The father assured that that young lady would soon be sacrificed to create a blood seed intended for Alexis himself.